I was watching a uh, video on Numberphile with Matt in it on witness numbers and testing whether a number might or might not be a prime. Right, super good video. Um, and at one point in the video, they talk about the sum 23 to the power of 373 mod 747. That isn't something you can necessarily do on a pocket calculator. So in the video, you know, they use Wolfram Alpha. I'm going to cheat and uh, ask Wolfram Alpha. So I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Very reasonable, I use Wolfram Alpha all the time. But actually, there's a really, really nice algorithm under here that I wanted to talk about today. In the number file video, this was about primality testing and testing whether a number might or might not be a prime. Um, in this case, actually, wh where you, you see this often used is in stuff like RSA, crypto public key cryptography. And so, actually, the numbers get much, much bigger than this. Right? So you might have some number to the power of a 2,000-bit number. So let's say you know 600 or more digits modulo some other 2,000-bit number. And the mathematics is so extraordinarily vast that you can't comprehend how this could possibly be calculated. The fact that we can reduce this modulo 747, so for those of you that aren't familiar with mo the modulus, it means you divide by 747 and then find the remainder. So it's a bit like a clock thing, is it? It's like exactly like a clock, yeah. You go all the way around to 12 and you start back at 1, 2, 3. It's that, but obviously your numbers are bigger. There's many more hours in a day. Even if you calculate this modulus, this is still a difficult sum because you have to do 23 times 23 times 23 times 23, 373 times. That's, that's not very fast, right? And if 373 was a 600 digit number, then even by taking mod, there's no hope of doing this, right? So we need some kind of algorithm that calculates what we call an exponentiation much, much faster. And that is a square and multiply algorithm. Really neat little algorithm, I think fairly intuitive to understand. Um, and it's used all the time in computer science. Whenever, whenever you have a sum like this, which is a lot of the time, you can do it really, really quickly using square and multiply. Now, actually, as it happens, they picked quite a difficult sum, right? There's, a, there's a re reasons for this, and we'll go into them. But I'm going to pick a slightly easier sum. Perhaps the first thing to do is to look at how the square multiply algorithm works, sort of a, a, an overview, right? And the idea is basically, if we square a number, we can get towards 223 to the 373 much more quickly, right? So, for example, suppose you were calculating 2 to the power of 8. So that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. How many is that? Th th yeah, times 2, right? Now, that took me a fair while to write out, but actually you could save yourself a little bit of time because you could do 2 times 2 is 2 to the 2, right? It's 2 squared, right? Then 2 squared times by 2 squared is 2 to the 4. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? And then if we do square this again, we can, go, we can jump all the way up to 2 to the 4. 2 to the 4 is 2 to the 8. And so we can actually do it in 1, 2, 3 operations. We can get to 2 to the 8 instead of this 7 or 8 operations. If instead of multiplying by your original value every time, you multiply by one of these much larger intermediate values, you can much more quickly converge on the solution you want. Assuming it's a power of 2, right? We haven't dealt with the slightly prickly subject of what happens if this isn't just a power of 2, which unfortunately in cryptography is most of the time. So in principle, the idea is that we can sort of jump forward in powers of 2 or you know, in, by squaring much more quickly, but we need some kind of mechanism of what we do if we're not just gonna get there by squaring every time. What we actually do is we do something called, um, well, in this case, we're gonna look at something called left to right square and multiply. And the idea is we look at the exponent, 373 or eight or some other number, and we represent it in binary and work out what operations we're gonna to need to do to get to the right um, result. I'm going to use a slightly smaller example on this, otherwise we're going to have to bust out the pocket calculator. So we're going to do uh, 3 to the power of 45 mod 7. This is a strange sum because in some ways 3 to the 45 is an extremely large intermediate value. So we want to reduce mod 7 as much as possible so that we keep it small. Otherwise we get a huge value and then we end up at just a number between 0 and 6 anyway. What a waste of time that was. But we can also use square and multiply to make this much faster. So the first thing we're going to do is work out what 45 is in binary and that's 101101. One. Right, I'm going to draw a line here so we can have some sort of delineation. Now, a couple of things to think about is, and suppose we treat this exponent as binary. So what we actually want to do is calculate 3 to the 101101, right? Whereas this is a decimal number and this is a binary number, so that's slightly confusing. I'm going to write a little 2 in here to show us it's base 2. Right? But a couple of things to think about. Suppose you have x to the 1 times by x to the 1. That's in binary, right? So x squared. That's, you're going to add these two ones together, so you're going to get 
x to the 1 o. Right? If you do x to the 1 o times x to the 1 o, right? so that's x to the 2 times x to the 2, you're going to get x to the 4, it's actually x to the 1 o o. Right? So whenever you square a number, your exponent shifts left one bit. Right? It doubles in size and shifts left. You just stick an o on the end of it, a 0 on the end of it. Right? If you multiply by the original number, so if you take, for example, x to the 100, right? it's not 100, it's 100. Zero, zero. If you take x to the 100 zero, and you multiply it by the original x, that's actually just 101. So it's x to the 101. Right? So you've got two rules. If you square a number, you take its exponent and you add a zero. If you uh, multiply the original number by your intermediate result, then you just add one to the exponent. Right? And so using those two different square and multiplies, we can recreate this exponent here in the minimum number of steps. So it might be three squares and two multiplies. Exactly, that. yeah. And you have to do them in the right order as well. Right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to build up this exponent here, or this one here, by doing repeated square and multiplies in the correct order. Right? So let's start with 3 to the 1, right? which is 3. And what we want to do is now do 3 to the 45 mod 7. Now I'm not going to calculate the actual values for a minute. We can fill them in in a moment. Right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go from 1 to 1, 0. Right. We're going from left to right in this particular version of the algorithm. So to do that, we need to square it. So we do 3 to the 1 times by 3 to the 1 is 3 to the 1, 0. Right. So that's actually 3 squared. Right. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll write in 3 squared here so we can keep a track of what the number is in decimal. So this is our binary, this is our decimal. Now, we want to go from 1, 0 to 1, 0, 1. We can't do that in one step. We have to do a square first. So we do 3 to the 1, 0, 3 to the 1, 0 is 3 to the 100. Right, that's 3 to the 4. So this is a square. This is a square. And now we're going to multiply. And I've sort of not left myself a huge amount of room here, but we, don't we won't worry about it. So 3 to the 1, 0, 0 multiplied by 3. So the original value that we have at the top is 3 to the 1, 0, 1. That's 3 to the 5. Right. Now, we're nowhere near 3 to the 45 yet, but hopefully you can see we're sort of making some progress. Let's keep going. So, the next one, we want to go from 3 to the 101 to 1011. So, we need to square again. So, square. So, that's going to be 3 to the 101 multiplied by 3 to the 101 is 31010. That's 3 to the 10. Right. And if, you, if anyone's got their binary calculator out, you can confirm my working here. Right. Let's keep going. So we're going to multiply. So 3 to the 1010 oh, oh, multiplied by 3 is equal to 3 to the 1011. Oh, one, one. So we've now built up the first four bits of our exponent. We're not that far away, I think. So that's 3 to the 11. And you might think, 11 is nowhere near 45. You're, you're talking nonsense. We're nearly there. Right? Got square that we've, got to, we've got to square it, right? So 3 to the 1011 oh, one, one, multiplied by, I should have just written squared. <laughs> Then I would have had a lot of little numbers floating about. It would have got a bit confusing. 1011 is 3 to the 10110, which is 3 to the 22. We've now got the first five bits of our exponent. And now we need one last bit. So that's going to be a multiply. Um, oh, sorry, no. Yeah, 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 my bad. Square. Skip that step. We pretend that step didn't happen. This is why you use libraries to do this, like Wolfram Alpha, and you don't use my implementation. So that's 3 to the 10110 times 3 to the 10110 is 3 to the 101100, which is 3 to the 44. Now, I think we're nearly there. Right? It looks pretty good. We're just going to multiply one more time our intermediate value of 3101100 times by 3 to the 1, which is the 1 there. And that's going to be 3 to the 101101, which is 3 to the 45. Just enough paper. Just enough paper. Hopefully I don't need to add to this. I do actually, I wanted to calculate the actual sums, right? But, you know, now, so this is the, this is the exact combination we want. If we're doing this modular arithmetic, then every time we do one of these sums, we can reduce it modulo seven and work out where it lands from naught to six. And that keeps our value very, very small. And we're also taking the exact minimum number of steps. Uh, so it's okay to re-modulo it each yeah, time. Yeah, so, so when you're taking modulo, all of these numbers end up as equivalent. And so if you take mod all the time, or you take it once at the end, or halfway through and then once at the end, it doesn't make any difference. It will just change the size of the numbers. So in general, the rule will be that you do it as often as possible to keep your numbers as small as possible. When you're multiplying numbers together, 
it, that scales very poorly with the size of a number. And so it's better to take them, make them as small as possible. So let's actually work through this. So we can just fill them in here. So if I just sort of create a little, little bit, this is the actual number we're going to calculate here. Right? So the first one is 3 to the 1. So that's, um, that's our starting number here. You could start at 1 and multiply by 3 for your first bit. You know, it's just an unnecessary step. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is 3 times 3, which is 9, mod 7 is 2. Right? So that's 2. Then this is going to be three, this is going to be the intermediate value squared. So two times two is four. Mod seven is also four. Right. Four times another three is twelve. Mod seven is five. Right. Five times five is twenty-five. But the next multiple of seven below that is twenty-one. So it's four is the answer. Right. Four mod seven. Right. This is not so interesting. This one. So this is another four times three. We already did that. It's five. And then this is 5 squared, we already did that, it's 4. You don't usually cache your results like I'm doing here, I'm cheating. We're nearly finished, so now 4 times 4 is 16, right? the next multiple of 7 below that is 14, right? so it's 2. Right? 2 times 3 is 6, and that's the answer. So if you do 3 to the power of 45, you get some sort of quadrillion or some really large number. If you take it mod 7, 6. Right? And we've saved quite a lot of memory and quite a lot of time doing this. We haven't had to do 45 multiplications. We haven't had to do um, very large intermediate values. This is super useful for cryptography. Let's look at 23 to the power of 373 mod 747. Now, I think they calculated the answer actually was 131. I've run through this just to see if it worked, and it does. I can say that for sure. Wolfram Alpha's code is correct on this. But let's look at this 373 in binary, right? So that is 101110101, right? Which is quite long, which is probably why I'm not going to run through it. So we could actually, I could tell you what steps we need to do. So it's 23 to the 1, right? That gives us our first one. Then we're going to square. Then we, that will get us to here. Then we're going to square and multiply, and that will get us the next one. Square and multiply, that's the next one. Square and multiply. Um, square, square and multiply. Square, square and multiply. Are you starting to work out why it's called the square and multiply algorithm? I think it's, yeah. Something to do with squaring and maybe multiplication. Yeah, definitely a clue that. <laughs> so we could run through this. So, so if you square 23 to the 1, you get 23. Let's keep going. So multiply 23 to the 23. Uh, square that, 23 to the 23. Now it's getting a bit hairy for me. 186, 23 to the 186. Square again, 23 to the 200, 360, 72. 372. Uh, that actually makes sense. That would make sense. I could have worked backwards, right? If only we could do that. Uh, 23 to the 373, right? So if you run through this on your calculator and calculate mod each time, you will hopefully, if you don't make a mistake, end up at 131. This is actually quite a lot, lot of steps. Let's see how many steps we've got here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 steps. And actually that makes sense because for every zero here, we're going to need to do a square. And for every one, we're going to need to do a square followed by a multiply. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you can see that even for sort of 2,000 bit numbers, exactly how many squares and multiplies you're going to have to do is going to depend somewhat on the nature of this Number. And that leads us to our, my last part, which is I wanted to say that, that this is the best number that there is, right? So this is 6, 5, 5, 3, 7, right? Now, I for a long time thought this is the best number. Now, I haven't been on number file to explain why, but there is no doubt in my mind. This number is used as the public key, which is the verification key most of the time, in, in, in the majority of RSA certificates, right? So on the web, when you go anywhere and a server gives you a certificate, the public key will be this number here and some large... Um, semi-prime number n. Right. Now, why is this this? Well, if I write out the binary representation of this, this is 2 to the 16 plus 1, which also happens to be prime. Now, the reason it's useful that it's prime is because mathematically then it doesn't share any divisors with another number, which perhaps we'll go into in a different video. But from my point of view, from this algorithm, the reason this is interesting is, is that is the binary representation of that number. In RSA, if you want to verify a signature, one of the things you'll do, beyond checking padding and a lot of other stuff, is you will calculate some message or some hash of a message or some representation of a message to the power of 655.37. Right? And that's going to be slow, except it's not slow because there's hardly any ones in here. 
right? It's just, all, it's, you start with one anyway, you do a bunch of squares, and then you do one final multiplication at the end, and you can verify very, very quickly. And that's actually one of the reasons that RSA is so popular. Right? Um, even though elliptic curve signature schemes and other signature schemes exist, it's hard to beat the, the sheer speed of that verification process, which is what you have to do every time you go on a website or anything like this. So it's a super useful function. From a verification point of view, this is nice and efficient. Now, unfortunately, private keys tend to be much, much bigger than this, um, because otherwise they wouldn't be very secure, because you could guess them. Um, so you are going to be doing something like your message to the power of, or some message to the power of a 2,000 bit number, right? But on average, you're gonna do what? Sort of 2,000 bits, so that's 2,000 squares, and then maybe half of them on average are ones, so it's maybe like one and a half the bit length. So maybe it's about 3,000 squares or multiplies, which on a modern computer is not so bad. It's not, it's not trivial, right? These are big, big sums, but it's not ridiculous to imagine you could do it. Consider that if you did it the naive way, where you did the message times by the message times by the message two to the 2,000 times, you would never finish in the lifetime uh, of the universe kind of, kind of deal. So um, it's perhaps good that we have this. Um, the only other thing I should mention, by the way, before uh, someone corrects me in the comments, is if you use this for a private key, the problem you've got then is that the speed of your algorithm, and indeed how you, you know, even things like the power of your algorithm on the, on the CPU, is dependent on what the private key is, right? Because you're going to be doing different amounts of square and multiply at different times depending on the key. And so you leave yourself quite vulnerable to something like power analysis where you can look at how much power drain there is on the CPU and you can see it go up for a square and then up for a multiply and up for a square and up for a multiply and actually just read off the key, right? And the other thing is that keys with lots of zeros will be quicker to use than keys with lots of ones in. And we don't really want to give away whether your key has a lot of zeros or a lot of ones. And so actually, there are variants of this algorithm like the square always multiply, where you do some sort of multiplication every time, and it's restructured in such a way as to be constant time, so that you don't have that issue of if someone accidentally has a key that has fewer ones than zeros or something, it, you know, it changes how long it takes. But because we can mod it by n each time, we're never going to have a number at any point that's bigger than 700. 47. So each time we multiply 23 by 23 by 23 by 23, we just keep modding by uh, 747. And when that space, what it's doing is it's looking for extra areas where it can add the nodes to build that graph up. 